It is raining. Yes. Um. This isn't going to be a high energy introduction because I was going to do this live and then I decided not to because I it couldn't be bothered. So here is just a voiceover because I don't think I could get myself to video myself. myself. So today we are going to be doing a sketchbook filling tutorial with me. Yes. So I might be doing some more of these. I might make this into like a mini series and today we are doing pencil portraits. You could probably do whatever you want. Um, you could use paint, you can use um, color pencils, you can use highlighters, markers, whatever, whatever. Let's just call it um, portrait paintings, not portrait painting, um, portrait, pra pra portrait practice. I'm gonna be using my mechanical pencil, um, 0.7 lead because any other type of lead is for losers. You can quote me on that, I do not care. 0.3 is just a death sentence for me. I once stuck my hand inside a pencil case and one mechanical pencil which I'm, I believe it was 0.3 um stabbed me inside of my nail and the lead broke inside of it and I didn't realize and then three days later I realized there was lead stuck in my um my nail and um yeah I'm traumatized so I have a reason oh okay so this is uh, a pinnacle moment of, of this video I used a rubber and <clears throat> um just watching this makes me sad. Like, I should have known. I should have tested it out. Basically, I used the rubber and it was a bad rubber and it smudged the hell out of my pencil drawing. And I was, I was livid. I would, I was about to end this video. I was gonna go home. I, I I'm already at home. I was just gonna, <laughs> But you know, it's a sketchbook, you know, it's you improvise, you use whatever you have. And today, it was kind of a good thing there because I wasn't a big fan of what I originally had. So having the ability to start over was kind of a good thing. But I'm not going to tell him with the rub of that because it doesn't deserve recognition. Hi guys, welcome to another video. I'm doing this voice recording the day I'm supposed to post this because I'm kind of contemplating that I want this to be a bit more educational than originally recorded because I had no idea what I was saying and yeah so so for the first portrait you can kind of see that I'm just putting a really really light sketch start off depending on the reason why I chose the reference for instance if I enjoyed looking at their hair ornaments or their eyes, I usually start with that area first. If I don't really have an interest, then I'll probably start with the eyes first. I don't really have an under sketch. I do have a pretty loose idea of where elements should be, so I just like jot them down and I keep them in, in the final product because I just find it's more my style, I guess, nowadays. It's more free, it's more loose, it's more... I think it's just a nice little sketching technique that I usually put in. Um, yep. And then after I have a pretty rough sketch, I usually get kind of bored with just adding more details. So I usually just go in really hard, really rough, adding more details to kind of accentuate the actual facial features and all that. Usually with like other areas, like the hands or like the clothes, I usually like making it really really loose and boxy and kind of as if they have fake hands or whatever. I don't know, I just find it really fun to do because it's much more carefree and I don't know, it's a nice break from doing all the realistic stuff. So if you ever need a break, then just, you know, make it seem as if it's like a, make it seem intentional. That's what I like to do. It looks really, really childish and all that, but it looks so childish that to this point that it looks intentional. So that's kind of what I'm going for. A lot of the areas that I do, like the headband, I do really simple shapes and really simple lines because that's just what it looks like in the photo that I put up there for you to see. The amount of talent people have these days with their realistic art is just impeccable, but I can't do that. This is what I can do though, so, you know. We, 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 we win some, we lose some. Oh, so I should probably mention that my face is gonna be in that little mirror because I was way too anxiety. I don't even know, uh, I was way too scared that my phone was gonna stop recording halfway through. So I use that mirror to like 
check in to make sure that it was always recording but now you can always see my face and I feel like that's gonna be really distracting so um oh well I'm not gonna edit that I can't bother. for the next one I really focused on his hair because it was really kooky and really um shapely I don't know I really wanted to add some negative space to it so the hair is just one simple outline and then I did really blended like really shadowy facial features i wasn't really impressed with this one i was actually gonna kind of give up on this page after doing this guy but then i added all the other details and i was like oh you know what i'll just continue it i added the dad banner for some reason i don't know and the tattoos just to kind of distract myself from giving up so yeah just you know because Imagine if I did stop here, that would be kind of sad because I actually really enjoy this page after it turned out, so yeah, go me, wee wee. Um, hey, next one, this one was kind of a big contrast to the other guy, the hair was all, it was really dark and really shapely, like a really black cloud, but I couldn't be bothered um, colouring all that in, so I just did really, really crazy, um, crazy crazy um scratchy um what's the, the circular motion scribbles scribbles um lots of scribbles for the hair um i really i have a hard time putting in pupils for side profile so i just made this an excuse to kind of just leave her eyeball out so uh, yeah so th for the bottom part i really wanted to add something that wasn't just a back black that wasn't just a black background so i found this black cat um, I was like, yeah, let's just put that in because it'll be a nice addition, I guess. The middle part, like the gutter of the sketchbook was annoying me. I was actually going to continue doing a black cat, but then I couldn't be bothered. So I just did a really simple outline of a cat just to kind of like, it looks kind of intentional um, now, but it really, it was just because I couldn't be bothered. And um, yeah, so moving on to the next side. This little cra this crazy old lady was on my Pinterest um, board for a while and I really wanted to draw her. This is one of my looser styles, I would say. This is the kind of style I do when there's a really um, intense facial expression. Like this one, was, she had a lot of face lines, uh, face lines and really, it was, it, she was just funny to draw. It was a nice, it was a nice touch, I think. Um, yeah, so just adding the hair, adding some scribbles, scribbly lines everywhere. Like the direction of the lines that you put down really accentuate the emotions, I would say. I feel like I'm trying to be really um, technical with what I'm doing, but honestly, I am i don't know what I do. I, <laughs> I just, this is just what I do. I hope you guys kind of understand my process by watching this um yeah i just wanted to fill that up so i just put an egg there um yeah sorry about the movement i'm still learning a lot about the camera angles and stuff so this was a little crying baby um really cute really simple i really wanted to add a crying baby because they're so fun to draw like their faces are so um like so va like potato shaped and it's really funny i find it really funny <laughs> i was actually gonna give up on this one as well because the teeth were annoying me but then i added a third tooth and i was like yeah that looks that looks pretty decent a good tip i would say is if you accidentally make a part too dark make everything else darker or make it seem as if just don't just go um go your own way um do your own proportions it doesn't really matter it's just it's just a sketch you know but it turned out really nicely i was gonna do an actual realistic teardrop but then i was like nope i can't be bothered doing that um with the cheeks i really wanted it to be really scribbly because kind of, like because she's crying so it's like really muddled and like really crazy and crying and she's crying <laughs> I was I was really sad that I couldn't do the hair because I was like one of my favorite parts of this picture, but um, it was still fun nevertheless. A lot of scribbles, little 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 scribbles everywhere. Um, yeah. Doop, doop. 
put a boop, 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 boop. Just some scribbles really here. Really, I'm really, I'm holding the pencil really lightly. You can't really see. Maybe when I, you see the other parts, you can kind of see how I'm holding my pencil. It's really light. I'm using 2B lead. I'm using 2B lead. Um, I, I'm not really a stickler for like high quality stuff. It's just whatever I have. Um, but I'll put down what I use in the description below. And yeah, so this next one, I was really drawn to how dark her hair was and how light and like soft her face was. With this blending technique, it was more of a really, really seamless kind of blending and shadowing. You can't really see any harsh lines like in the old woman or like the scribbles of the baby's face. This one was more of a, um, a really rendered, really soft kind of shadowing technique because her cheeks were so soft and like round and looked so cute and I was like yes I have to do this is the type of style that I would be using for so I'm really glad that this page has a lot of different styles that I've used because I didn't really notice this but yeah, I'm proud of myself this was a nice page anyways a good tip um a lot of people have been asking how I do face shapes um starting out I would say that you use darker backgrounds when chiseling your face um usually starting out you should do like you should make the face seem bigger than you expect and then using dark hair or like the the neck shadow you can kind of chisel down the face to and to the to the spot where it looks proportionate like for this one you can kind of see how i've kind of drawn the shadow of the neck to kind of pinpoint where the chin is instead of just doing the chin first which I did do the chin first but that's because I'm I practice a lot so I kind of already know where it is but starting out I would say use shadows use dark hair use dark backgrounds just to kind of give yourself a a a safety pin not a safety pin um a backup would it be backup a safety a safety net oh a safety net yeah like a safety net but for proportions, that's what I like to do. Especially even with teeth, I'll show you how I do teeth in the next person. Um, if you're also too scared to do the teeth shapes, you can kind of, if there's like a gap where you can see the an, a gap between the top and bottom teeth um, rows, you can kind of use like the black, the blackness to kind of chisel out the shape of the teeth as well. So that's what I've learned to do. So yeah, moving to the last one. This one I was also going to kind of give up because I wasn't really fond. I was kind of done with this page already. It was really tiring. A lot of faces and the, the, like the pressure of getting them all kind of decent and to like, I don't know, my standards was kind of annoying. As you can see in the nose here, I made the nose way too high, but I did it really lightly. As you can see, I was holding the pencil really lightly as well and loosely just to make sure that I don't press down too hard. So it makes it easier for me to mend my mistakes when I see that something isn't like proportionate or or anything. With teeth, um, starting out, I was really scared of putting the teeth lines and actually having teeth shapes because I was always scared that it'll be too wide or too boxy. But nowadays, it's like it doesn't really matter because you're gonna have to put those lines in in order to get better at teeth because it doesn't. Teeth is just teeth, you know. There's gonna be so many different types of teeth. You're gonna you're gonna be bound to make teeth that look kind of like realistic, even though it may be wider or bigger than you expected. Yep. So that's how I do the lips. I'm really sorry that the video quality isn't that good. My phone is kind of going through a rough patch, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully. She had like sequins on her eyes and I couldn't be bothered doing like individual ones so I just did a bunch of random little circles. Um, yeah. When people are like bold or have like the little fuzz on their hair, I find it really... I'm still trying to get the hang of it. So with this one, I just did like really rough scribbles. You can like downward scribbles to kind of um... I don't really do like a hairline. I just let the lines become lines themselves, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, then yeah. The thing that I've been adding now to a lot of my drawings is like the little highlights. 
like just adding little circles on the noses or on the mouth just to like kind of have a cartoony um, effect that really works well I think with my style um with the background I just wanted to add some more um like stuff I was looking around my table to try to find stuff to like um give me inspiration for the stickers and yeah so just some close-ups as you can see with the headband you can kind of see how simple it is it's just really basic shapes really basic lines um that kind of I, that's how I broke down the original reference photo. If you want to see it again, you can just go back to that time because I didn't edit it back here. Um, yeah, just making it real simple. Freckles, you can kind of see a close-up of the eye. This one, if someone has really dark eyes, um, I like to do, and I don't want to like fill it in dark, then I like to do really thin circles as you can see how there's like kind of two circles in the eyes so I put them really close together if someone has really light eyes I put them a bit further apart like in the old lady or if someone had really dark eyes and I really wanted to fill them in then um yeah I just fill them in like the what number was it the one with the really dark hair she had really her eyes were really close so you can't, we couldn't really see like the whiteness of eyes, so I just colored that in and it really looked good because it looked, I thought it looked pretty, pretty similar to the reference and I was really proud of that one. With the hair, with this one I didn't really focus on hi adding highlights or anything. Sometimes I add like a squiggly um, box to kind of like break up the, the lines and stuff. As you can see with the close-up with this one, there's not really any lines in the cheeks. You can kind of just see how it's all blended together, just to kind of add to the softness of her facial features. You can see with the eye how um, I've just coloured it all in and added some little highlights, which were really cute. Oh, oh this is upside down. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, yep, you can just enjoy the background sounds now. I think that's all I have to say, and yeah. Yep, and here are just some close-ups of faces. I'm really proud with this page. Um, even though I did want to give up like eight different times during the duration of this video, but it ended up really nice and I'm really happy with it. Hopefully you guys kind of understand my process now with different face shapes and styles. Um, just how to add different elements and making them you know your own and all that also i didn't get to ramble so here's a little story that stephanie really wanted to talk about about rubbers <laughs> and i didn't have enough footage for that so here's a little short story anyways while i ramble here's a video of me figuring out that i have a camera on my laptop and listening to music for this video so um yeah enjoy learn don't use your rubber they are dumb i remember once in kindergarten i wasn't in kindergarten i was in year two i went to the kindergarten store not the kind uh the kindergarten classroom and i asked for a rubber and they said that we don't keep rubbers in the kindergarten bedroom, or not the bedroom, kindergarten um room, classroom, because, um, yeah, we just don't have any. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean you don't have any? This is a, this is a, this is a classroom, why don't you have any rubbers? But now I realize, um, what is it, how old am I now? Um, I'm, boy, I need to write this down. Um, 2002, I was in year one when I was 12. Is that, is that how old you are? Or was I 10? 10? I feel like 10. 10 is a good number. Maybe 7. Oh, let's say 7. And I am what? Um, 18 now. So 18 minus 7 equals 1. 11. Equals 11. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Uh, 11 years ago. And, yeah. Rubbers. Okay. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>